Well, hi everyone, and welcome to lecture 14 of Physics 3113. Last lecture, we discussed the harmonic oscillator in detail, and then did statistical mechanics of that, and uh, discussed the relation to photons, in particular to a gas of photons, when you have a um, well, so-called Planck gas, or when you have radiation in a cavity, or when you consider radiation of a perfect black body, uh, that is an object that acts as a perfect perfect absorber and emitter of radiation. So any object approximates a black body sum or are very ideal. And in fact, if we look out uh, at the uh, in space in all directions, the early universe um, can be considered to be a black body. And uh, this has due to the expansion of the universe has cooled quite a great deal since matter and radiation, uh, decoupled. And so um, we'll discuss that as an example at the end of this lecture. But in this lecture, we'll pick up where we left off. I'll just review again the last few slides of the last lecture, introducing black body or so-called cavity radiation. And then we'll, um, we'll use what we've learned so far and we'll calculate the energy density, um, the Planck distribution, um, Wien's law, and so forth. And then we'll look at the equation of state and finally the, this example that I told you about. Okay. Well, last time uh, I discussed at the end of the last lecture black body or cavity radiation. So let's just go through that again. All objects are essentially black bodies of some sort. That is, um, they absorb and emit radiation. And a black body is, a, is an ideal system. It's, um, it absorbs uh, all the radiation that uh, falls on it. So it's a perfect absorber, but it's also a perfect emitter of radiation uh, over all wavelengths or frequencies. And the spectral distribution, which is how much energy in a small interval of either frequency or wavelength, depending on how you wanted to, to your preferred uh, variable that you use to describe the distribution, um, it, it only depends upon the temperature. And, and if you want to think of something, think of if you, you know, you have that fire poker that you've had in a fire, and if it's kind of hot, it's, you know, you pull it out, it's red hot, but if you, you know, if you leave it in a really, really hot spot, or if you blow a lot of air on it, um, um, then, of course, it will be white hot, and sort of, there's a kind of characteristic temperature, and that temperature really is the peak. There's a, you'll, we've, we'll see that this spectral distribution, which is called the Planck distribution, has a peak. And when you see a really hot piece of metal that's red hot versus white hot, or you know red and then it looks kind of yellow and then it gets white, which is actually quite broad, but uh, definitely you can see something red hot versus yellow hot. That's really what you're seeing is pretty much the peak in the spectral uh, black body distribution. So even the universe itself um, is acts as a black body uh, and it emits black body radiation and this is known as the cosmic microwave background uh, and it's background radiation and it comes from uh, what's called the decoupling of matter and radiation um, that is in the early universe it was very hot and dense and it was so hot that hydrogen or any other atoms uh, were not formed as uh, uh, bound as you know protons and electrons they were just completely ionized in a plasma. And, of course, radiation uh, was not transparent in the universe at this point. And as the universe expanded and cooled, at some point it was cool enough to where um, hydrogen can form. And then all of a sudden the universe became very, very transparent. And then uh, over the billions of years, the universe kept expanding. But what we see is if we look out in every direction, we see this background radiation, um, which was very hot at the beginning of the universe, but as because the universe has expanded, um, it now looks very cool. In fact, it, the, if you look at the uh, the if you, you look at the spectrum of the radiation, the background cosmic microwave background radiation, and it is a black body, uh, and it's a black body with the temperature that's around 2.7 degrees Kelvin, and it has its peak. Uh, in this distribution at a frequency at 160 uh, gigahertz. And so, the, and, and as I said last time, this temperature is measured very, very accurately to, you know, so here's uh, five decimal places. 
um, and, and it really is uh, measured. It's probably more accurate than this number I, I, I have now. And the reason why it's measured this accurately is people will look at fluctuations in this temperature in different directions, and it tells us a lot about uh, the early universe, and it helps um, to understand models of the early universe. So, and so you may have encountered these before, but the black body radiation can be characterized uh, with in terms of several different laws you may have heard of. The first one, of course, is Planck's law. And it's a formula that shows this spectral energy density, this distribution. Uh, so it's the emission around each frequency at some particular temperature. So you're given a temperature, you have this distribution. And if you look at this at low frequency, nu, it, it starts out going like nu to the third, so it grows. And then as nu increases, this term, the denominator here gets very, very large, and it cuts it off. And so this, this uh, we call it u, it's little u, the inner density. Uh, as a function of nu, it has this form. And uh, so that's known as Planck's law. And um, Wien's displacement law, there's a peak in this, as we'll see in the next slide. And Wien's law just says that that peak, if you increase the temperature, this peak, uh, called uh, nu max, um, it grows linearly with the temperature, or behaves uh, proportional to the temperature, the, the peak of this distribution. And then, of course, there's a Stefan-Boltzmann law, which says the total energy density, that is, we integrate over all frequencies, the total energy density goes like t to the fourth. And sometimes you just have sigma t to the fourth. So we'll actually calculate this and calculate the constant in front. Okay. And so I showed you last time also some, some black body radiation curves. Uh, and here, in, in this plot, uh, the the horizontal axis is wavelength instead of frequency, um, just inversely proportional, of course, to frequency. Uh, and you can see for short, blue hot stars are blue, and so they have really short wavelengths. And here's this this Planck distribution, but now plot it in, in terms of uh, the wavelength instead of the frequency. It still has a peak in it, uh, and yellow stars and red stars. And here's the micro the measurements of the cosmic uh, microwave background by a, a satellite. And uh, you can see, well, here it's plotted in frequency. Uh, and, um, well, it's plotted in frequency, but it's also, they give it in units that's one over some wavelength, right? So people have different ways of plotting this. But this is the peak uh, that grows linearly with temperature. And this is a measurement of the, the anisotropy of the microwave background radiation if you look out into space, right? And, and these are very small fluctuations. Um, uh, around the, the background temperature, which is, uh, so this is probably, this is the, uh, so if I change the temperature, I move this distribution up, and so this is sort of, they've measured this curve at every place, and they've gotten this um, uh, map of the effective black body temperature in different directions of uh, looking out into space. And of course, we, uh, I mentioned this in the last slide, but we kind of went through, we, we, tre we treated uh, we kind of did both in a kind of perspective. We, we started out with harmonic oscillators and we showed that these could be excitations that could be considered as photons uh, that obey so Bose-Einstein statistics, of course, with zero chemical potential, and I described all that last in the last lecture. Um, the point is a cavity is, uh, if we think of a cavity or really an ideal black body, a cavity is used a lot because it's, um, you know, it, for precise measurements you have a small hole in the cavity and and then you can really get all the radiation uh, coming out uh, um, in, instead of some of it going off in, in different directions so you can actually look at the integral of this spectrum very easily um, but the idea with any black body is there are many many modes of oscillation um, there are many many modes of the electromagnetic field that that behave like uh, a bunch of harmonic oscillators and these, their excitations are photons. And so we're going to uh, calculate um, these radiation laws so, and we're going to do this by considering the partition function for many oscillators and we'll have a whole collection of oscillators and, and we'll start out by labeling these oscillator frequencies by omega sub i. And so how would that look? Well our partition function, uh, the total partition function for the whole collection of oscillators would be the product of partition functions of 
each oscillator. And that's and, and, and by saying that it's a product, remember what we're saying is they don't interact and certainly uh, photons uh, don't really act interact uh, with each, uh, in it, with each other. So so um, it's it's a very good approximation. It's, it's nearly exact. And so, um, and so it's just a product, and, and then of course we found the partition function for, e for a single mode, and it had this form here, and, and you can see here we're actually, we're, we're including the zero point energy, so uh, in the way we write this, we, and of course we don't have to as I argued, and, and we'll eventually we'll, we'll get rid of that. Um, and so here's, and so we just, um, it, we, we'll, if we pull out that factor, uh, which in every term it just comes out front here, and uh, and in, in the end we'll want to find the in, uh, average energy. So it's clear if we if if we leave in the zero point energy, we'll have this big factor here. It'll contribute an infinite amount to the average energy. So we're going to do what we described with the single oscillator in the last lecture. We're just going to measure energy with respect to the zero point energy, and essentially that makes our partition function. Uh, just this term here, All right? So, which and then again, uh, yeah. So, and of course, you realize that as a partition function of Bose-Einstein partition function uh, with zero chemical potential. So that's the partition function. We we just have a product of the partition functions of the individual oscillators. And of course, working with a big product like that is very um, inconvenient so we're instead as we've done with everything else bosons and fermions we'll work with the logarithm of the partition function and so instead of the product we'll get a bunch of sum here over all the uh, oscillators so that should look familiar and then of course we make our cavity large the modes get very very dense and close together and as we have done with um, fermions uh, in, in, in a box or bosons um, and as you'll do in the assignment with a, uh, with with modes in a trap, for will the idea will be we'll want to pass uh, from the sum to an integral by finding an appropriate density of states. And since we're working with angular frequency here, I mean we could work with energies as we've done before, but let's uh, it'll be more convenient here to work with this angular frequency uh, due to the fact that we, we're dis describing photons. So, so we'll, we'll need to find this density of states, uh, g, which is a function now of the, of the, the angular frequency omega. Uh, we'll need to find this mode density, this density of states, as a function of, of this variable omega. And how do we do that? Well, you know, it's like we've done other times. We've, we, in, and we look again in a 3D box. Um, in the assignment, you'll be looking at trap mode, so it'll be a little bit different in the, the homework assignment program. You're, you're going to derive a different density of states than what we typically do for our 3D particles in the box. Um, it just comes out different and it changes the results a little bit, but here we'll just do the usual. Uh, we'll, we'll consider uh, three, uh, photons in a box or electromagnetic modes in a box, which are of course waves, and, and if you go back to one of the earlier lectures, we, we derived the density of states with respect to these allowed wave vectors, K, and we found we found this value here. It's proportional to the volume, and it goes like k squared dk, or and there's a two pi squared in the denominator. Well, we want to get from wave vector to uh, angular frequency, and that's actually quite easy for photons. Uh, remember my silly joke about what's new? Bob asking his buddy what's new, and he said c over lambda. Okay. Well, new of course for photons is equal to c over lambda, and uh, nu is uh, 2 pi times nu is just omega and and we the point is that um, we relate the wavelength uh, to wave vector it's just uh, inversely proportional and there's a factor of 2 pi there so uh, basically for photons the angular uh, frequency is just the speed of light c times the wave vector and that's our relation that's just a linear transformation so basically it's a trivial to go from density states in wave vector to to angular frequency because it's it's just a constant c and yet, so of course this looks the same we've just got this extra now uh, factor of uh, uh, c uh, to the three power because we had two powers from here and one from there essentially so so that's that's the answer for our um, 
Well, that's the answer uh, for just counting modes. Now, um, we'll need to multiply by a factor of two because as you know, photons have two polarization states. And just as an aside, uh, you know, photons actually have spin one, but, but because they're relativistic, they only have two polarization states. We're not going to describe that. We're not going to discuss that in this class, but uh, at some point you'll get to that. So, but, but you know this from previous courses that you, with photons we have two polarizations. They can be linear um, or they can be circular, but there are two. You can choose which ones you want to work with. And so we'll have to multiply this by a factor of two. So we'll do that. We'll just include this factor of two uh, in the density of states. And so basically we get, we get just the volume and omega squared over pi squared c to the 3 d omega. So now, there we go. We have really everything. We, we just take this and plug it into there and integrate from 0 to infinity. And we and then once we, we have the log z, and then we can find whatever we need to find from that. That's that's how we that's what we've been doing now for the last several lectures. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, well, this. Alrighty, so um, yeah, let's look at the mean energy density. That's uh, mean u and we're, and we're, we'll make it density so let's just divide by volume uh, because I mean you know we have the volume here so let's just move that around and um, and you remember this then uh, it's uh, it, it's the derivative of the log of the partition function uh, I guess technically I should have one over v here because I've, I'm going to take the v around to this side so uh, Anyway, um, so this is this integral. Um, um, so so I, I, there's a small little mistake. I should have actually had my v over here, and then I, I'll, I'll take the v out of g of omega. But down by the time we get to this stage, I, I'll have done that. I've moved the v over. But it looks like this. I just wanted to go through this. You just take the derivative of this guy. And so, of course, the density of states doesn't uh, depend on beta. And the only thing that depends on beta is this factor. So you can take the partial derivative through the integral, and you just take the derivative of this term, and you get this. And uh, and then we just plug in what we get. Um, uh, like I said, I should have technically there's a, a v in here, and and I should have had one over v and canceled that out at this step. Small little mistake. I'll, I'll correct that before I upload the notes. Um, anyway, and that's what we get, right? I mean, we we. You know, we so we so we haven't even so we we'll we'll leave it in this integral form. We we really haven't. Uh, in, in next, we'll actually do this integral, but let's just look at this for as it is now. And well, let's just write it in terms of frequency because that's usually what you see Planck's law, Planck's distribution as. And you see, well, I, I have this form, and that's uh, in collecting all the terms together here. Uh, and let's let's take this thing this thing out of the integral here, this little u uh, that we call, uh, this will be our spectral distribution, and uh, this thing here, and that's exactly uh, Planck's distribution, the Planck distribution we discussed. So you see, Planck's law just comes from counting states, this whole uh, process of finding the density of states, uh, or, or, or well, of course, they had to realize first that the, the modes were quantized, and then, they, and then they just had to figure out, like we've done many times, how to count them and, and, and go to a large box and have an integral. And, and that's all it is, really. So Planck's law just comes from counting states and realizing that the electromagnetic modes are quantized. That's it. Well, then it's easy to actually calculate this total energy density. We just will pull out the constant here. And we just have to do this integral. Uh, I've written now instead of beta, I've put the uh, KBT here uh, explicitly, and well, we'll do what we usually do with this, these types of integrals. We'll change variables to x, this dimensionless variable, and so um, and so when we do that, we see that uh, v, the v cubed is this. We pulled out these constants here, and if we then pull out all the con constants, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, We'll get all the constants out in front of the integral, and 
you see, well, you'll see uh, right away that, uh, um, I mean, we, we still haven't quite done the integral here, but uh, you can see right away that it's going to go like t to the fourth just from this change of variables, right? We pull, so, so we basically see that the energy, den the total energy density is going to be um, sigma times t to the fourth, and sigma is going to be this integral. And then, of course, we can actually do that integral. Um, this is one of those uh, definite integrals that we can do. And, uh, and, and yeah, that's, the, that's uh, Stefan uh, Boltzmann law with the constant sigma. Usually it's called sigma. Yeah, so we found the Stefan Boltzmann law. Uh, now, we also mentioned this Wien's displacement law. Let's, let's find that, or we'll describe how to find it. Um, to find the frequency of the peak, we take the derivative of this, this uh, function here, and, we, and, and I've dropped the brackets just to be, because uh, we know we're talking about a mean energy and we're a very large system, so we can ignore the fluctuations. And what do we get? We set that equal to zero, and we get this equation, basically, of this thing. Uh, well, the, uh, th this has to be equal to, uh, well, if you take the, if you, if you, uh, if you, if you take this and, and take the derivative and set it to zero, you get an equation for our variable x here, basically. And it's it's this kind of equation. It's uh, it's it's um, you know um, it's a it's it's a transcendental equation. So it's not it doesn't have a nice analytical solution, but you can solve it numerically or graphically. And then what you get then is this peak frequency uh, v max uh, satisfies this equation. There's, in other words, v max or sorry, nu max is this numerical factor, 2.822 to three decimal places, uh, Kb over h times t. So it's linear with temperature as, as we advertised before. All righty. And what do we have next? Well, let's now find the uh, Helmholtz free energy. And, um, and, and why do we want to find the Helmholtz free energy? Well, it's one way that we can easily find the pressure, and then uh, from that we can, we can get the equation of state as well for our Planck gas, gas or uh, for black body radiation. So remember we have that for the Helmholtz uh, potential or Helmholtz free energy, F, it's minus uh, KBT uh, times uh, the log of the partition function, and we found what the log of the partition function was. We already uh, once again, we substituted in the density of states, and we did this interval, and um, and uh, so we we find that the log of the partition function is basically this constant times uh, k kb. It's actually Boltzmann's constant again, k, kb t to the cubed, and so um, since we multiply again by um, minus kbt, we get basically the Helmholtz free energy, which has uh, kbt to the fourth power. Well, um, we can compare the expressions. Remember, we if, once we have the Helmholtz free energy, we can get the pressure. We've already calculated the mean energy, but we could calculate, you know, we, well, we calculate the mean energy density, which is just divided by volume. But if we want, we can get that another way. We could do that by taking uh, the derivative of beta times the free energy, that, or um, basically, I mean, that's just saying what we said before, essentially, if you plug that in, that's how we found the mean energy before. Um, and anyway, we can, we can do this and show that the equation of state for radiation is PV is uh, U over three. So let's do that as an example. Uh, we have the free energy here, uh, and just take the derivative the negative derivative with respect to volume, of course, and you just get uh, this constant here. And let's write it in terms of beta here. So basically, we have, you see, we have I've broken up into the constants pi squared over 45 and 1 over c to the 3 h bar to the 3 um, and beta to the minus 4. And we did find the same thing for the mean energy. We had this before, and uh, if we write it in the same form, we see of course, these are uh, that PV um, basically is uh, uh, if we if we uh, 
well, P, we need to multiply by the volume here. And so we see that this times the volume is just U over 3. It's very easy to see. Okay. Well, so that's the equation of state. Um, and you can actually calculate things like the pressure of your photon gas uh, this way. Well, here's another really interesting example. Let's find the entropy of black body radiation in terms of temperature and volume. And then once we do that, we can actually treat a really interesting problem that um, involves expansion of the universe. So remember, we had uh, Helmholtz potential F is U minus TS. So we can solve this for S, of course, um, and we can plug in the values we found for uh, U and uh, the free energy. And those, of course, have very similar form. And we combine all the terms. And we find simply that the entropy is 4 thirds the energy, 4 thirds U over KBT. So let's, let's apply this to an interesting example. So if we look out and we look at the cosmic uh, background radiation, and um, we know from the energy scales of, of the binding energy of hydrogen that the temperature of the cosmic uh, black body radiation when matter decoupled from radiation was 3,000 Kelvin. 3,000 Kelvin is, in, in, is K, KB times 3,000 Kelvin is basically the um, binding energy of the hydrogen atom. And so um, so that's what it, so, so, so the universe was 3,000 Kelvin and it was a black body when the radiation decoupled from matter and now we look out well we see it's 2.7 Kelvin but let's just say that's 3 Kelvin uh, to make the problem simple. And the question is what factor then have distances expanded uh, since uh, since this point in time uh, when um, matter decoupled for radiation. Well, we can. the other piece of information we need to know is we can consider the expansion of the universe to be ice entropic, that is, entropies uh, conserved. It's adiabatic and reversible. Um, so the entropy isn't changing uh, as the universe ex expands. And so that means that S, of course, is constant. And of course, we found that the energy U was, or mean energy U was proportional to the volume and T to the fourth. And so then if we, we, we plug in this, and we divide by T, we see right away that the entropy is proportional to the volume and to the temperature to the third power. And if we think of the volume as being some length, length cubed, I mean, the universe is closed and you start in one direction, you eventually come back to the same place in a curved universe. So uh, the volume, I mean, this, you know, obviously the, I mean, the rough approximation of the, we can just put in some distance scale um, L here for L cubed for volume. And we see that this L cubed times temperature cubed has to be this constant, which is proportional to this instrument entropy that was constant. And so that tells us then, uh, right, since uh, both are the, to the third power, that if t changes by a factor of 1,000, then the distances change by a factor of 1,000 as well. So just by looking at the temperature of the uh, cosmic microwave background radiation and knowing this result for our black body radiation or gas of photons, uh, we can tell, um, and, and of course we know the energy scale for the hydrogen atom, we can tell that the universe has expanded by a factor of a thousand. Okay, well, I guess that's all I had for this lecture, um, because I, I put a bit a bit much material in the last lecture, and so it left this one a little bit more condensed. But that will conclude our discussion uh, on black body radiation um, and which you can think of as a um, Planck gas. And um, the next two lectures, we'll move to talk about um, phonons in solids, which have very sim similar characteristics, um, slightly com more complicated, but similar. Okay, so see you next lecture.